If Jane Jacobs were around today and she had a bike, where might she take a ride? Hi, I'm Robin Rothstein, longtime downtown Manhattan resident and arts chair for Community Board 2. We all have a little extra time on our hands these days, so I thought this would be a great opportunity to check out the public art, landmarks, and monuments in our neighborhoods and to discover how these local treasures reflect the challenges, heroism, and resilience that we're seeing in our world today. So without further ado, let's roll. First stop, Winston Churchill Square off Downing and Bleecker Streets. I caught up with Community Board 2 Parks Committee member Georgia Silvera Siemens for some background on this small park named in honor of one of the 20th century's most iconic world leaders. When I first walked into Churchill Square, um, I was really struck by the trees. So the planting palette in the square, it's mostly trees. Um, and they're labeled. And so a typical arboretum is a collection of trees with labels. This is definitely a small park at 0 0.05 acres. So I thought it was really neat that people took the time to put labels on trees. I think it's a really important way for people to connect with trees. So the armillary, so it's a, it was used, designed to represent constellations and stars, planetary objects, and maybe it's a metaphor for exploration. And so having it on the Avenue of the Americas, you could say it's sort of a nod to exploration, maybe global connections between New York and other places. Uh, Churchill himself was involved in World War II. And so I feel like there's maybe like a global, I mean, from the sidewalk, the armillary looks like a globe. And so maybe there is some sort of play in terms of the shape. And Churchill Square is almost like a hidden gem. So for all those reasons, I, I think it's worth a visit. Next stop, we head over to Hudson River Park to catch a few rays and also a pretty cool public artwork. The Apple is a 6,000 pound, 10 foot tall bronze sculpture in Hudson River Park, located just south of Charles Street in the Millennium Garden. Installed in 2004, it was designed by sculptor and painter Stephen Weiss, the late husband of fashion designer Donna Karen. According to the Hudson River Park website, the sculpture is part of Weiss's Larger Than Life series and honors New York City by symbolizing the city's heart and the core of life. There's a lot to notice when viewing the different aspects of the Apple sculpture itself, but when you take it in with the legacy of the Hudson River flowing alongside it, and also against the backdrop of the World Trade Center, you indeed feel a sense of the strength and resilience that New York City has shown over its history, and it gives hope that we will rise to the occasion again. Next stop is just a few quick pedals up the Greenway to the Jane Hotel on, well, Jane Street. There's a lot of history to unpack here, so I checked in with someone who knows a lot about it. I'm the founder of Untap New York, which is a web magazine and tour company that specializes in New York City's secrets and hidden places. And I'm also um, an adjunct professor of architecture at Columbia's Graduate School of Architecture Planning and Preservation. Um, the Jane Hotel, while well, actually in my 20s, I partied there <laughs> in the ballroom and I always loved the building. Um, and so I thought it was a great opportunity for me to go back and to photograph some of the places that I, I hadn't been to just on like a more casual visit. So it was a great visit where I got to go to the rooftop bar when it was empty, uh, go see some of the hotel rooms, which I've, I've never stayed in. So it was fascinating to see, see that. So the Jane Hotel was originally built in uh, around 1907 to 08, and it functioned as the American Siemens Friends Society Sailors Home and Institute. So quite, quite a mouthful, but in essence, it welcomed sailors who had just come off their ships uh, along the piers on the Hudson River. And uh, I think most famously, of course, it housed the survivors of the Titanic um, after they got off of Pier 54 on uh, the ship, the Carpathia, um, and it's a landmark. The other thing I love about the building is that it was designed by the same architect that designed the Ellis Island Immigration Station, which is now the museum. 
So it really has like a very rich architectural history. There was a lot of attention paid to the design. There's Guasavino tile under the front entrance and Guasavino is everywhere, Grand Central, also in Ellis Island. So those tiles are very recognizable. They're kind of a crisscross um, pattern and often like on arches, uh, interiors of buildings and exteriors. So some of the things that I discovered about that time period when it was being used as housing for the Titanic was that uh, the public would walk by and, and leave money as donations uh, for these sailors who actually hadn't been paid um, since, the, since the sinking. So I think for me, there's still that spirit here in New York of people like really trying to find ways to help, uh, even if it's a very small way and it's a very personal thing, like the kind of the sing-alongs that are happening that are spread through social media, but you know, happen in real life. Um, I think are representative of that. And the other thing that I found was that there was like a service that was held a memorial and like over a hundred people attended and there was like a, they sang uh, near my God to thee. So I guess that's, their version of New York, New York today. Uh, but the New York Times reported that it was a mighty roaring chorus. So I do think there, there are certainly parallels to how uh, New York City responds to crisis and how its citizens kind of take things upon themselves to do things. And I think that's a very New York and a very American, uh, American thing. Next, just a few blocks east down 12th Street is the scenic landmark Abingdon Square Park and the iconic Doughboy Monument. I caught up with resident expert Sigrid Esser to get some historical insights on the monument and this lovely urban oasis. Uh, the Doughboy, uh, the expression or the name Doughboy was co coined uh, in the 19th century. Uh, and uh, during World War I, uh, one, uh, the infantrymen were called Doughboy. It became a nickname. Where it came from, nobody really knows. There are theories, you know, the buttons are the donut format. All the food they got was very doughy. <laughs> the Doughboy uh, was erected or put in place in 1921, and it was dedicated. There were, there were over 10,000 spectators who gathered for that. It was an important event. Um, our Doughboy here is one of nine in New York City. We have also in the park, we have the Flagstaff that was erected in 1933. And we have another little memorial that I want to mention, uh, honoring the passing of Adrian Shelley, uh, the actress and director and screenwriter who sadly was actually killed close to Abington Square. Um, in 1794, after the Revolutionary War, the city council decided to change all the names in the city, to get rid of, uh, to, to reflect American uh, independence and to cancel all British names. And so parks were renamed after Patriots, like Washington Square Park, Jackson Square Park, Madison Square Park. But the name Abington Square Park was maintained because the Earl of Abington and his wife were strong supporters and sympathizers of the Patriots. And he spoke uh, with big voice in the British Parliament and against the British policies in the colonies. It would be nice if people understood that they are very in a very historical place in the midst of New York City. And we maintain it and we honor it with a strong also community feeling here. I always say I'm, I'm very proud when I go out and I see that there's only remain, uh, there's only standing room in the park. All the benches are full. We hope we get to that soon again, you know, and uh, people come together to chat, they come together Saturday, there's the green market around the, par uh, around the park at the perimeter. And it's, it's a historical place for, you know, that honors. I, don't, I wouldn't even say only the soldiers, but you know, ex exactly the resilience of the city. Um, I think that would be very nice if people visit uh, come and appreciate it. Last, but certainly not least, we're wrapping up this ride at the New York City AIDS Memorial. I caught up with Executive Director Dave Harper to get a deeper understanding of the memorial and its significance.
the organization was formed officially in 2011. Uh, and that organization, the organization's mission was to raise the funds to build a memorial. That process of building started in the summer of 2016. Uh, and the memorial was dedicated on World AIDS Day, which is December 1st, in 2016. And the, the thing I think about most now is, it, especially now, is that it's, a ga it's really designed as a gathering space. Then also the way the sunlight plays off the shapes that the architects, Studio AI, who are the architects, um, the way they designed uh, the structure of these kind of uh, parallel lines of uh, metal between the triangular superstructure of the piece and the way when the sun comes through it, like sun coming through Venetian blinds, the way the patterns shift and, and fall on the on the granite pavers. I think it's just, uh, you almost feel like you're transported once you cross the line um, into un underneath the canopy into a totally different, uh, really almost spiritual, sacred space. Um, getting everyone on our side to, in order to build something that honors not only the 100,000 New Yorkers we've lost to AIDS, but also the 125,000 plus still living with HIV, the doctors, the nurses, the frontline workers, the caretaker, caretakers, the activists. In, in this meaningful tribute, I think, shows a lot of, uh, of honors their resilience, their leadership in times of crisis, and also presents a place for people from anywhere who are coming to New York City to find a uh, space to remember and reflect and renew. Once we can gather together again, we'll be doing more programming on site. Um, and so stay tuned. Uh, we're really excited about bringing history, culture, educational opportunities uh, that touch on the AIDS crisis to the park and the spaces around it and, and to really get the community involved. And um, I hope people come visit. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed Robin's ride and that you check out the tour when you're ready to hop on your trusty set of wheels. Until then, see you the next time.